and I want to start by showing you that the CART Fund is on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So I want to make sure that you're always following us on all of those social media accounts. And this is our generic email address, cartfundnews at gmail.com, where you can send us information. We all know our basics, our little blue buckets. They are affectionately known as LBBs. Uh, and in the far left corner, you will see a picture of a little blue bucket for 20 years. We've thrown our spare change and coins and dollar bills into these little blue buckets at lunch. A few years ago, some folks even started making things like these jars that you see on the right-hand side of the page. They have the cart logo on them. They would hand them out to their members to take home. They would put them in public places like stores or restaurants and ask folks to, to throw their spare change in there as well. And in the bottom center, you even see what we call car cups. And these are small sized stadium cups that you can throw either in your car because they fit in the little cup holder, or you can put one on your nightstand or on your dresser in your bedroom and throw your spare change in there every night. So that's a way that you could get every member of your club to collect money at home right now, even when they're not coming to meetings. And then you schedule a date every once in a while that they do turn it in or bring it to a meeting. The Rotary Club of Murphy uh, took that to a whole new level and started something that we are affectionately calling a coin drop. You will see in the bottom left corner a picture of a very large blue bucket. It's not a little blue bucket. It's a large blue bucket. And a little piece of uh, a little secret for you that is nothing more than one of the Lowe's buckets that you can buy at Lowe's Home Improvement Store. And they've covered it up with our rotary logo and our cart logo, so, giving everyone a small jar, much like you see uh, in the picture. And everyone takes their jars home with them. And then once a quarter at a club meeting, everyone brings their jars in and they dump all the money in there. And so they're not only collecting throughout the throughout the year at each of their club meetings with the blue buckets, the little blue buckets, they're collecting at home as well and then bringing it into the large blue bucket. If you want to see exactly how this works, uh, there is a video on our YouTube channel of the Cart Fund Coin Drop. And that's something that you could easily duplicate in your club if you are interested in doing that. On the far right hand side, you will see a small clear acrylic collection box. This one happens to have a key so it can be locked. And this is similar to those boxes that you might see at other locations in town that are collecting for other organizations. A club in, um, in Greensboro area purchased these boxes off of Amazon. And they picked whatever size they wanted, knowing where they can put them out in public. They printed the sheet to go in it themselves on the back. And they put them out in places that they know and trust. And then every once in a while, they collect the money. And that goes towards their, carts, their club's contributions. In the middle of the upper row, you will see something that says cans for cart. And I will give credit to this idea to the Rotary Club of Madison County here in my district, who has one member of their club who is willing to collect everyone's recyclable cans and drive them every once in a while and turn them in for money that they then put towards their club's cart donation. We did this, this photo is actually from my club's fundraiser a few years ago. When I saw the idea, I thought it was great. And I thought we have all of these fundraisers where people are drinking canned drinks, canned beer, whatever. So we specifically set up trash cans just for recyclables that we could then do towards cans for cart. Find a location that is close enough to you that you can um, deliver them and get cash back. I will say it's not a large amount of money, so it takes a lot of cans to make some money, but if you're willing to do a little bit of work, it's worth it. This is a flyer from the Leland Area Rotary Club down near the coast of North Carolina. They do a pancake breakfast every year to raise money for CART. I'm not sure how that's going to work out this year. Now we know that certain things are, um, are not, certain fundraisers can't be held. Um, but a lot of clubs are able to do pancake breakfast through local restaurants such as Fats Cafe or Applebee's. They are willing to host these for you. 
Um, some clubs do them all on their own. Um, we have a McDonald's franchise here in Western North Carolina that is owned by a Rotarian. He was willing to do a pancake breakfast for a club here um, as well. Um, and the Leland Club not only does their pancake breakfast, they also do a golf tournament every year as one of their fundraisers. So you might be thinking everybody in my community or already does a golf tournament or my club already does a pancake breakfast. So I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this is the fundraiser for you. I'm saying this is an idea and we want to think bigger than that. We want to think about other fundraisers that we might consider. And so we're going to talk about those as well. The photo in the middle I took when I was visiting a club in Wesley Chapel, Florida, and they didn't even know I was going to be there that day, but this is something they do every week at their club. They do a 50-50 raffle. My club does one as well, but our money goes towards operating funds for our club, um, but their 50-50 raffle each week goes to the CART fund, and because they have a screen where they have regular announcements running, this came up on, on the screen. The one thing I will add is that it would be nice to use our actual logo on there just to remember the branding piece of it, um, but that's that's just one thing that you could add, but I'm really grateful that they are doing that. It's something that once clubs are meeting again, that if your club isn't already doing a 50-50 or perhaps doesn't need, maybe uh, I know some clubs, I think Silva does a different uh, organization every week for, or every month for their 50-50, for their happy dollars, things like that. So perhaps if your club does do that where you rotate around, then perhaps you would like to consider the cart fund. The right hand upper picture is another fundraiser that was initiated by the Rotary Club of Murphy here in my district. And that's one of the small silicone bracelets. They uh, designed these themselves and they, um, they added the cart logo and they, they got them for less than a buck a piece and they sell them for $5. Um, those have been a, a fad, I guess, if you will, for a long time, um, having your calls on the silicone bracelet. Um, a lot of people still like them, still wear them. Matching gifts are something that I don't believe that we take advantage of nearly as much as we should, but there are a lot of corporations out there that will match the donations of their employees to nonprofit organizations. Because CART Fund is a 501c3 and is a well-established charity, if your organization, perhaps you work for one of the larger uh, Edward Jones, Wells Fargo, uh, Duke Energy, um, Whatever the case may be, if you work for a very large corporation that does matching gifts for employees, don't forget about that. Just simply fill out the paperwork um, and ask one of us from the CART Fund if you need us to help you with that. And you could double your donation to CART. If you're going to make a donation anyway, write a check. You're going to get credit for it at work because they're grateful that you're, you're supporting a nonprofit and they're going to double it. So make sure that you take advantage of that if you have the opportunity. The bottom picture on the right is our friend Carol Burdett, who is a past district governor from upstate South Carolina. And she issued a challenge to her district last year while she was district governor. And so she is a huge Clemson fan. She um, said if, if our district raises X number of dollars, I believe it was 100,000, I will wear a Gamecock shirt, which was a, a something fun that everybody wanted to see her do. She also said, if you make it to the next level, X number of dollars, I will shave my head. Uh, but these challenges, and we're going to see some more photos of those later on, can be a lot of fun. Right, so a few years ago, uh, Steve Briggs down in Florida, uh, who is a travel agent, put together a cruise uh, that he promoted all over our zone. And the folks that went on the cruise, that's the picture from the first year of all the folks who went on it. A hundred dollars of every cruise that was booked went toward CART and the individual got credit to their club. Uh, this is something that if you are a travel agent or you know a travel agent or you want to organize something like this, Steve could help you or you could do one on your own, but it was an easy way to raise money for CART. They had some special activities and events while they were on the boat. Um, I think the next time this happens, I think we should make sure that included with their package, they all get some sort of t-shirt to wear so that we are making a really big splash get it, uh, when they're on the cruise, uh, and that everybody knows why they're there. But um, that that's just another idea of fundraising, $100 per person. It was like an extra $6,000 $6, that year uh, to CART because of that opportunity. 
Um, there's a club in Greensboro that does a go-kart race. You get it? Kart. And Gary Everhart helps to coordinate that. But that was really innovative thinking on Gary's part to come up with go-karts and kart and come up with some fun idea for a fundraiser. And the key to it is it wasn't just Rotarians. That's where some of these ideas become so important. If you're going to go on a cruise, you're going to take your family or you're going to take your spouse or you're going to cruise with your friends who are all um, love to go on a cruise, or perhaps you're going to do a fundraiser like a, a go-kart race. Those are not just Rotarians contributing to the calls. And during these unprecedented times, as we say, it's more and more important that we look at ways to raise money outside of our Rotary clubs. The bottom left corner, you'll see a flyer for Burgers and Brews Against Alzheimer's. This was one of many fundraisers that Caroline Assisted Living did for us here in our community and also in uh, the Lincolnton community. They also did a Kentucky Derby party. Now, obviously, right now, the assisted living and the retirement communities are not opening themselves up for us to come in and do fundraisers maybe one day. So I didn't want to take this out because what I wanted you to know is that these groups like Caroline, which is now called Elmcroft, Caroline was purchased by a couple of different companies. So there, there's not a Caroline anymore. They're all owned by different groups, but there are those type of organizations in everyone's community. And they're always looking to market themselves to their community, to potential new residents. And they're always looking for ways to introduce themselves to others. And they did these fundraisers for us where they provided all of the food, all of the drinks, including alcohol at no charge to us. And they allowed us to invite people. They invited people on their list. And then when people came in, we did silent auctions and we also took up just general contributions. We had an opportunity to talk about why we were there, what the CART fund was. Um, so I have this flyer that they did. They did all the marketing for us. All we had to do was provide them with our logo. We did do the um, auctions. But again, we did one for jazz and juleps during a Kentucky Derby party. We did burgers and brews. They hired musicians to come in. They took care of the food, the drink, the guest list, uh, and all of the marketing. All we had to do was help promote it and uh, show up. So that was really a lot of fun. The Inspire Festival in Sumter, South Carolina, I use this as an example because it's one of many community festivals. Now, granted, again, right now, some of our festivals are not happening, uh, but the Inspire Festival was started in Sumter, South Carolina, in the hometown of our own Roger Ackerman, who created this organization, as an opportunity to honor him. And so they did a lot of fundraising that weekend that went to organizations that Roger and his wife supported. Things like CART, also the synagogue there in their community, and some other things. Um, so if there is a festival in your community, perhaps, hopefully again soon, perhaps you could look at having a booth there or having a fundraiser there, doing some of your other uh, raffles and things like that, sharing information, but also some sort of fundraising. Maybe some of these organizations, especially when they start back here in the next few months, hopefully, might be looking for organizations to partner. It's our job to make sure that they think of us when they're looking for partners. The 0.0, .0 is one of my favorites, and this was an idea I had. I know y'all think, oh my gosh, when I say, I have an idea, y'all get nervous, but um, everybody was doing a 5K, an 8K, a 10K, a golf, a golf tournament, a bowling tournament, whatever. We created the 0K. It's all the fun without the run. We had these little stickers printed that say 0.0. .0. We have our Rotary Club uh, logo on there, and we did it as a fundraiser for CART. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, you, you blow the starting horn and everyone races to the bar or the buffet. It's, it's not your typical fundraiser. The gone are the days of us just simply relying on a million dollars in change. It ain't happening no more, y'all. <laughs> but if we want to continue to give a million dollars a year um, and more, then we have to look for alternative ways to do fundraising. One final plug for our newsletter and our social media. Don't forget to go follow all of our social media accounts. If you are not currently getting the newsletter, please not only make sure you're signed up to get it, forward your copy to um, all of the district chairs, all of the club chairs, all of the members of your club. Ask them to all go to cartfund.org and sign up to receive our Cartwheel newsletter, newsletter uh, and uh, follow us on social media. And we look forward to seeing you guys again next month. All right.